snap. We're back with the normal snap video. I'm sorry for the lack of uploads these last five days. Yeah, it's been like five days. Uh, I actually, for once, have a good excuse though, everybody. First of all, I'm, I'm still figuring out like the content uh, for Marvel Snap on YouTube. I'm gonna start doing a lot of YouTube shorts and uh, I wanna revamp like the, the channel aesthetics and, and uh, you know, make the thumbnails better. Like I'm not really, um, I'm not super th uh, happy with how the thumbnails are right now. Uh, maybe you guys have like any sort of like criticism or, you know, regarding all that, like in the comment section down below, that would be really helpful. I'm trying to like really make the proper transition. I can be very uh, picky with that stuff. So, you know, I know I've been very inconsistent with the uploads, but like the consistency will eventually uh, be there and it'll be, it'll be prevalent, I promise. It's just that this time I do have uh, a good excuse though. I, I got married <laughs> like two days ago. Um, I, I had my parents over for the weekend and uh, you know, we, we, we had the ceremony. Basically, it's not like the actual big wedding that we're, you know, planning like uh, that's gonna be in August in Brazil. Um, I'm marrying, I married Jeremy, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> and yeah, I, but we needed to um, get the papers uh, so that she can go to Brazil and come back because her ID, her Spanish ID has expired. So that way, you know, she can come back from Brazil and uh, not be stopped at the airport essentially. But yeah, we officially got married uh, a couple of days ago and it was amazing. You know, had had my friends and family there, and uh, you know, I, I got very drunk after. It was it was it was it was a great time, uh, but yeah, I've been out of the loop for it, and I got back to streaming yesterday, and uh, you know, now we get the uh, the YouTube content uh, rolling out. You know, I I'm not gonna label every video that I upload uh, like apologizing for the lack of upload the other day and this and that. I'm I'm getting there, I'm getting there. H have faith in me. Like it, we're gonna have that consistency flowing. And um, and again, I'm excited to incorporate like shorts onto the channel. I've never actually done YouTube shorts uh, regularly, and that's uh, definitely the plan uh, moving onward. So let me know what you guys think about that. And I'm gonna stop talking because I've been rambling for like for two minutes about just yeah stuff and things and stuff. But today I'm gonna share the deck that I played uh, right before I you know left for the weekend, right? And that is Friendly Neighbor because it is a Spider-Man deck. It is a clog. Spider-Man deck with Dr. Octopus that is insanely fun to play. And actually, I mean, it would thrive more if Hela wasn't the number one played right, uh, deck right now because we can beat Hela uh, with Dr. Octopus and uh, with clogging through debris and uh, you know the mechanisms that we have here. But sometimes uh, they just don't play enough stuff and uh, they don't, we actually benefit from them playing Lockjaw. And, but sometimes that doesn't happen and uh, we can be put in a position where we just kind of like lose. But that happens to literally every deck. Um, Hela is extremely powerful, unpredictable and uninteractive. So it's just um, hopefully they, they fix her soon because this deck into a bunch of other matchups does so well. It seems like this deck is weakened to destroy, but we actually have a good matchup into it because we are incorporating armor and Dr. Octopus. Dr. Octopus is insane against Destroy. So let me break down this deck, what it's trying to do and everything, like explain why I chose the cards that I chose and uh, why I'm not running certain cards and all that good stuff and hopefully not ramble to an eternity about it. So we have what essentially is a move clog hybrid. The idea with this deck is to fill up our opponent's locations with crap so that we can lock them out of options in them and uh, we can unmuscle them. Spider Woman really excels in a deck like this. Uh, I have a new variant, by the way, but I, I still very much like the uh, the car Carna Carnageist. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to pronounce that, but you know, Carnage, Spider Woman. Kinda hot, not gonna lie. What did I just say? I don't know. Spider, Spider Woman is really good into a location that's completely full up because it allows us to essentially push for 12 points for five energy without being vulnerable to Shang-Chi. Now, I say this because sometimes uh, the opponents have one more um, slot open and we get Spider-Woman and we hit for 11 points and they flip over Shang-Chi expecting a big unit to be developed there and they get nothing out of it. So it's very, 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 uh, a very good five drop that's actually quite underplayed in my opinion, also very budget friendly too, and a great card in this deck. So as you guys see with, uh, when, when it comes to the curve, I always ramble a lot about 
deck curves because they're very important in Marvel Snap. Like you have six turns and you need to know exactly what you're going to be doing during these turns and, and that you're maximizing the energy that you're given. So what we're doing here is we have two five costs and we have Titania, Nightcrawler and uh, the pseudo one drop in Miles Morales. So this is, this is the design of the deck. Basically what we aim to do ideally is we aim to Polaris like there's a lot of there's a lot of things that we can do um like we can play miles on turn four or we can play miles on turn six that's generally when miles is going to be happening if we want to play miles in some other turn that is what nightcrawler is for nightcrawler is a proactive one drop that will go down and then we can choose to move whenever so we can enable miles and play him from one energy and that's why we have a high density of three drops that's why we barely have any four drops and that's why we go with five drops because our ideal end game situation is spider woman into either miles Miles or Titania, right? Uh, our opponent will have initiative over us, likely, and we'll be able to. And even if they, even if we have initiative over them, because the location that we're going to be uh, playing Titania in will be full, we don't have to worry about her leaving us. You know, she will not betray us because there's just no room for her. Because otherwise, she would leave the hell. Like she, she's, she's not very loyal. But goddamn, we, we, we pay that uncertainty you know, for her power. Like that five power for one energy really helps us take the W in so many scenarios. And that's essentially what the end game is like. So l let me drive you a, a little bit through like what is an a atypical like uh, curve with this, right? We generally play Mojo on curve, believe it or not. Uh, Mojo is very easy to enable in this deck and we can play him on, on, on turn two in a location where we expect there's gonna be a lot of um, things happening. So let's say we go Mojo on two, we go Nightcrawler turn one. Uh, we wanna play Nightcrawler and Mojo separate, by the way, because a lot of times we wanna move Nightcrawler into the Mojo lane to enable Mojo and enable Miles as well. So you don't wanna play them both in the same location from the beginning, because uh, Mojo uh, Nightcrawler moving into Mojo is something that's gonna be very common. So Nightcrawler in a location, Mojo in another, and then we play something, let's say we play like Polaris or Spider-Man. Right? We play Polaris into the Mojo lane. If our opponent has developed any units, we can move them to that lane. And we have moved something, which allows us to then go debris into Spider-Man on four. Right, We debris to try to further clog that lane and set up the Spider-Man as well. And then we Dr. Octopus on five. We generally don't wanna go for YOLO Octopus. What I mean by YOLO Octopus is like playing Dr. Octopus in a lane that's completely empty. That's a very funny play. And against decks like Destroy, you can completely wreck them, but a lot of times, most times, you're gonna get screwed because you're not gonna be able to retake that location. What we're trying to do with Dr. Octopus is actually use him to clog up a lane that's already almost full. We play him there, we get 10 points, and then we pull something random, totally not a Shang-Chi, by the way, and uh, we clog up that location and we can still fight for it with stuff like Spider-Woman, or depending on the scenario, we can just develop five power onto it. The fact that we can split our power into two different plays, like a main one and then a support one, uh, allows us to really tackle all sorts of different board scenarios. And that's what this deck really thrives in. Of course, we're playing Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi can allow us to knock out these, you know, lanes that are just filled with infinites and all that shit. Uh, we can just knock that out. Uh, we also play armor though, because a lot of times we can play armor and then play uh, Dr. Octopus in that location and we don't have to worry about pulling a Shang-Chi. Armor also helps us protect our Titania and our Nightcrawler from Killmonger and also the rocks that we generate from debris. And armor just is very reliable, very neat. We have Stegron who also can be played potentially on turn four or even on turn five alongside something like a Miles, for example, instead of going for Dr. Octopus. And we can try to uh, play him in a lane that's not very busy to move whatever is there to a lane that is actually very busy. So that's essentially how the deck functions. It's uh, very, very fun, very satisfying to play. Again, hello decks can be problematic because they just don't develop enough early on, uh, but every other matchup is extremely fun to play. Even decks were for which we don't have proper techs for like, like ongoing decks with Ravona and uh, Onslaught and the likes, we can actually clog them because with Limbo, we have more time to clog them, which is very nice. And ultimately it's just a very, very satisfying list to play. And I've been rambling about it for like, God knows how many minutes, but I'm going to end this deck tech before 10. I swear I will. So yeah, that is the deck that's right there. Very, very fun. Uh, Spider-Man is a phenomenal unit that's very underplayed and fits a lot of decks and I really, really like and can also disrupt a lot of plays and can allow you to go for some crazy plays. There's one game today. You, you guys are, are going to know what, what game I'm talking about. Spider-Man just 
Spider-Man just wow. That's that's all I'm gonna say. Just wow. You, you you'll see. So yeah, now I'm gonna stop talking. Still under 10 minutes. Fuck, I failed. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for daily Marvel Snap content. I'll I'll get I'll get the consistency flowing. Uh, watch out for the shorts as well. Hopefully you enjoy those. And now I will finally shut up. Have a solid day. Enjoy the matches. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We got Lake Hellas, um, good spot for Titania. Um, is this a Thanos deck? Because whenever I run into this location, is it is it just me or do I'm, I'm always against the Thanos deck when this thing pops up? I want to armor into Lake Hellas because I can develop Titania there and uh, play around. <sighs> That's why we play armor. We're gonna play Staggeron in the middle. Staggeron is, is a good stats point, and we're gonna we're gonna move that rock. And if we move that rock to the left, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy! They Shuri. But if they Shuri, they have to play there. Shuri is four, though. Uh, neighbor, neighborhood Spider-Man over here. Can you... Um... Okay, so we always... We always... Um... This could be a Nimrod. No, I'm going to play you here. And this Spider-Man. Where's the Spider-Man going? Is it going to the right? Is this like a Nimrod? If it's a Nimrod, what are they doing? If they were to destroy her in the middle, if they were to destroy in the middle, then uh, this wins. Wakanda. We love we love seeing Wakanda. That's domain. Okay, no 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 early play. That kind of sucks. I'm gonna play debris on the right, and then I'm gonna try to Polaris. If I Polaris here and I, I nullify that almost, I can armor at the last turn to surprise them. I'm gonna I'm gonna snap. Armor here allows us to uh, tackle the Death's domain. Alongside like armor Stegron is looking like a solid endgame. So I'm I'm thinking that our game plan is gonna be Polaris. Ideally bring uh, the Okay Enchantress over there. Ideally bring the rock. There we go. And then we Doctor Octopus. And we try to go for that there.
That location is one. They have initiative over us. So we armor and we Stegron in the mid. They could have armor too, though. Is it is it better to... What if we Nightcrawler Spider-Woman? It's like... Okay, so that's 14 points. 17 points. 14. Barely gets us above them. It's just... They're just too... They're too far up ahead there. Uh-oh. You don't have armor, right? Oh, you do. What's that last card, though? Oh, gotcha! Gotcha, baby! Stagron! Stagron! Mmm! I should have ran. That's a standard Black Knight deck. See, I don't have a problem with that deck. It's got strong burst. It has its, uh, discard synergies. But, you know, if you think about it, like their plays can be predicted, right? Like the, the Ghost Rider there can be predicted. I don't have an issue with discard strategies. I have an issue with, with a card that just vomits everything on random locations on turn six. So it just turns the end. It's, it turns the entire game into a coin flip. And people who defend hell, I like. I just, I, I'll never, I'll never understand. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stay here. They snap on me with a Jotunheim. I'm not intimidated. They got a Titania. Crimson Cosmos is more annoying. Crimson Cosmos is definitely very annoying because I would love to play this debris on the right, but I can't. And they Cosmo me there because now they know they know I'm gonna play it there. Well, I'm gonna stagger on this side because they're likely to play on on Crimson Cosmos now, and we can send whatever we want to uh, to Jotunheim, and we enable Miles, and then and then we, and then we see what we can do. The Cosmo and the debris sucks, but it's not like it's not the actual worst thing in the world. Dr. Octopus on, on Jotunheim, easy win. Um, yeah, I wish I wish it was actually that easy. Be nice if it were actually that easy. I still think we we Dr. Octopus here. We can disrupt that with, with like a, an endgame Polaris, but we'd have to move this turn in order to enable that. Maybe I'd have, maybe I'd, I should, I should Dr. Octopus mid. I probably should Dr. Octopus mid. I didn't think this through. So, like, it's just that I want to disrupt this with this Marvel, but this, this puts us in a precarious position. No, I, I think I, I think I goofed here. Oh. Well, that was actually part of my plan. Mm hmm. They still have Titania. But playing Titania there doesn't allow them to win. No, it does. But if we if we play Miles here, then we're good. Just thinking here, what did, what could they have that that beats a Spider Woman here? Spider Woman is nuts here. Yeah, they cannot play Titania there. If they play Titania, it's in the middle, right? But then we get it back. A snap on your ass. I don't think you beat this Spider Woman in the middle. Yeah, run. Snap! Snap! I mean, I love seeing these stats, but I don't like thinking about what my opponent's hand looks like because it could definitely... Why do I keep clicking on them? I have the information here, Miguel. I, I, guys, I, okay, I have to admit, maybe 
Just maybe I am actually a bit of a boomer. This Titania is really awkward. I'm already not liking this game. The fact that this Titania got hit. Hmm. We don't know where they're going to play. Like, playing this Titania is kind of reckless. But fuck it, I can make it work. I think, I think they go... Let's play around Miss Marvel. Let's play Titania there. Okay, that's a cool Scorpion, though. We could Polaris our own Titania. Isn't that like a pretty sexy play? Or there's their Scorpion, that works too. Okay, so it's a high evolutionary deck. Um, I don't like that Octopus there. So I'm gonna push it. That Octopus, that Cyclops. I mean, they, 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 they all got weird glasses. They're all the same. Yeah, mo moving that. I mean, this is the turn where they magic. But this is the turn where we YOLO Octopus, guys. How many cards do they have in hand? Guys, guys. YOLO Octopus here and we get our titania back or or yolo octopus here and we solidify this lane and then we can work for the other one i'm gonna snap with that here i'm, I'm, I'm gonna go because they're probably gonna magic if they're gonna magic they're gonna magic the, ba the baxter building don't think magic is in this deck um it could very well be if i see cyclops and high evolutionary guys i i why would you not think about magic it's a man thing okay Okay, maybe this is not what I thought it was. Wasp into Quinjet, beautiful. Okay, but we gotta keep in mind that they can they can um strange. Um you are you are one, two, and three costs. So you you give them minus two power. So my you're affecting my Polaris and that's it. From that side, you're affecting Scorpion and Quinjet. And you're giving them minus two power. So if you play a Luke Cage then this is plus four power here, 14, like you're way too far behind. You're way too far behind and Spider Woman here just kind of like wins. It's kind of risky though. What about Spider Woman here? They have priority, it's true, they have priority. But, but if they play something here and I play something here, then Titania bounces back. I think, I think it's middle, I think it's Spider Woman middle. Exactly. How about we win all three? Actually, no. Easy. Victory. The Titania Mind Games, ladies and gentlemen. This is the newer um, High Evolutionary Affliction that has been performing well. I really like it. I, I like that deck a lot. Um, I definitely want to build something like that when I get High Evolutionary. And Man-Thing. I really like the Luke Cage-Man-Thing combination. That's, that's totally my shit. I really like it. Good stuff. I'm gonna go Nightcrawler on the left. Here's our girl, but we're we're gonna keep her in hand. We're not we're not gonna let them steal her from us. Uh oh. Uh that, what? No! Nightcrawler, no! It's a bounce deck. It's a bounce deck and they're gonna beast, guys. Watch, they're gonna beast and we're gonna Polaris on the right. Why, why do you, why do you demon into Falcon? You're just flexing.
Mojo into Stark Tower. Very, very enticing. Guys, um, I don't know if this is just me, but I'm kind of developing location phobia, I think. Every time I... Okay. Like, every time, like, a new location... Re oh, my God. I just... My adrenaline spikes. And not in a good way. Iron Man. Oh. Oh. Polaris for stats. They um they got the highest copy. They have a they have a Spider Woman. the brain left are you kidding me bro i'm yolo octopusing what is this okay so they got they got ravona renslayer um this is like a high evolutionary deck and in my experience high evolutionary decks want to sequence their stuff in a certain way a uh, high evolutionary tri tribunal I, th that's what i meant tribunal tribunal high evolutionary <laughs> Tribunal. We see this. It's Tribunal. They have, like, um, obviously Iron Man, Mystique, stuff like that. We see the Iron Man in our hand. We're going to YOLO opti Octopus. We're going to YOLO Octopus on the right. And it's going to, guys, it's going to turn out great. We're going to snap on their ass. Watch. Just watch. What could go wrong? What could go wrong, guys? Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Fine. Omega lol. Okay. Well, you see, you see, friend, I can do that too. But I could always stagger on first, and then, then you have my permission to die. GG. I'm not scared. Can you guys actually do math properly, please? Before you backseat? Try, try again. Spider-Woman. Spider-Man. Why didn't you just retreat? Saying, are you the guy that like when when BP spilled all that oil over the ocean, you told him why why did you guys carry that amount of oil in a, in a ship in the ocean? Didn't you think of the concept? Like you're that guy, aren't you? Fucking Captain Hindsight, dude. I don't fucking know, man, because I wanted to. I I I believed. Okay, I had hope. Jesus. Hmm. It's not a Thanos deck. He may may make you think that it's a Thanos deck, but it's not a Thanos deck. Um, one cost cards here have plus two power. I mean, we kind of want to go there. So fuck it, let's armor there. Zabu, okay. Oh, oh, really? Well. Well, now you join me. Now you join me and you're going to love it. Let me 
Miss Marvel, huh? We could surprise them with a debris later. But I kind of like the idea of just like friendly neighborhood Spider-Man over here and move this wherever. Yeah, get over here. Get your ass over here. Five cards left. Five cards left. Do we try to Shang-Chi them? I think we YOLO Octopus. We're gonna have to be a 16 points. We're gonna be a... Easy Nightcrawler to solidify this location. Will overpower them by, by two points. It will die. It will die. Nebula will go. It will die. Oh my God. You people are like, seriously. Do I have to explain everything? Oh my God. My concern is like a random Omega Red. Omega Red kind of like Rexus. But fuck it. Here we go. Nah, that's not it, Chief. Body. Victory. You're a god gamer. Thank you, Mana. You know, I, you're on the right track to becoming a moderator. Keep it up. Okay, we're gonna do something spicy here. We're gonna play Nightcrawler on the right, and we're gonna move into the Gamma Lab, but we're gonna do so on turn three, so we can enable Miles to be played alongside a three drop on turn four. You taking notes, Timmy? So Nightcrawler on the right. Nebula Cringe. Must be nice. Okay, fine. We Mojo mid. Surely we'll draw into a three drop here. Surely. Well, fine. They had, oh my goodness, they have initiative. They have initiative, dude. Now, let's not get greedy. Let's play you and let's play you here. Yeah, Nebula is kind of insane. Okay, no Doctor Doom. Ah, ah! what the fuck, bro? Hmm. They can't access it with Dr. Dooms. Is Stegron good enough here? It, it, it just loses to Jessica Jones. I think I have to avoid this lane and I actually have to push, I have to push Nebula out. I think that's the play. You want you want that flood? Fine. I don't have any more one drops to play alongside this. Like if I debris, I shut down the Miss Marvel, but I've already lost this location anyways. I limit their plays here. I get Titania back, but then Titania is like really volatile then.
Guys, I want to try a play here that's like really fucking crazy. These these decks play Eliath, right? For science, guys, for science. I, I have a crazy play. They play Eliath, right? Go to middle. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Altar of Death. Um, let's just hope that it's not a... Um, no, this is just a, a cringe Loki deck. What are we getting? They have one of these four cards from us. They have a Cosmo. Okay. I'm going to develop Mojo on the right. They get the lowest cost card, right? So they got a Titania. That's a 1-7 Titania. Oh. Oh, the problem is I don't like any of these plays here. But it does allow me to enable Spider-Man into that. The problem is I, I get Spider-Man back here. No, no, but I'm gonna do this anyways. I may I may pull their Cosmo. So all I have to do is I have to Cosmo myself. If I play Cosmo here, when my Spider-Man comes back, his unreveal effect will not trigger, and I win that location. And then I have to Titania here for energy. But by, by going Dr. Octopus on the right, um, I basically nullify that location so they can't just dump stuff in the altar and get it back like we did. Oh no, the Polaris. Oh my fucking god, the Polaris. Um... Show me. That's the difference between your Oct Dr. Octopus and mine. My Dr. Octopus actually had a brain behind it. Yours was just YOLOing. Yeah. Yeah, get out of here. Victory. Okay, we outplayed the shit out of this guy. Top 13, please. Does it count as being toxic if you're insulting Loki? Exactly. I'm, I'm just so happy that that I'm not the only one who thinks this way. People try to cancel me for shit-talking Loki, I'll cancel them. I'm gonna prioritize the Nightcrawler over Mojo here. I am shocked, guys.
This this Dr. Octopus feels like reckless. But we need to stop. Like, how do we disrupt the Hella? We have to Dr. Octopus here. YOLO! And just like that, they got no hand. One card left. You snap? Okay, okay. Let's let's think about this. You have a Magneto, don't you? You top deck a Magneto. Magneto will be 12 power. And will move Polaris over here. I mean, Magneto just loses, though. 13, 13 points. I mean, if they Magneto, they just lose. If we Shang-Chi here, is that enough? That's 13 points. Yes, Shang-Chi here is enough. Literally, the only big play they have is Magneto. Giganto, they can't play. Uh, the problem is if they Magneto, they just kind of like win, don't they? Oh, wait, did I? Uh... <sighs> Oof, overthinking. Get wrecked. Oh, you climbed. What, what, why do you sound surprised? Am I a joke to you? Let's wait on the uh, on the armor for a bit. Let's see what they do. Sunspot over there. Okay. So we wanted debris on, on the sunspot lane, essentially. I'm going to armor here. Uh, guys, real talk, real talk. Who's got the better armor? Okay, pixel armor is actually not that bad. Pixel armor is actually pretty top tier for a pixel. But bruh. I, I got the, the, the totally not toxic positive energy armor. You know, we armor them on a lane. They want to destroy stuff. Like We're like, <laughs> Are you having fun? It just, it really fits that. So we're gonna go, um, we're gonna go debris on the right. Nice Cosmo, bro. Now this is where things get, get tricky. I'm not gonna run away from your snap. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick on. And then whatever you play here, I'm going to move it to that lane because you have initiative over me. Friendly neighbor spider over here. Get your ass over there. Now, here's the thing. You have Dracula. You want to dump your hand, and then you want to you want to get twenty points with with this Dracula. You want you want to have you have like a destroyer or an infinite or something, and you're gonna win the middle. I need to give up on the middle. I need to win this side, and the way we do that is we Spider Woman Titania. That's thirteen points, and I I'm pretty sure you cannot beat me on the right. Actually, Cosmo Cosmo is better. Exactly, exactly. We do this. Um, now this Polaris is just kind of like... No, this Polaris goes here and this Titania goes here. Because this, this Polaris otherwise really messes things up. Uh, you don't beat this. 
You don't beat this. I, I, I know what you're up to. I know what you're up to. I, I know what you're doing. Uh, okay. Calculated? Oh, you had both. Oh, you had both. Oh. Oh, damn. E Harvard, thank you. I'm I'm actually surprised you you enjoy this degenerate stream, but I I, I appreciate the support. Titania. Is chat always so asshole is? Are are you new here? Um Adelan. Adelan sucks. Adelan sucks. What do we do to like we need to do something to get ahead of them. So it needs to be a Spider-Man or a Polaris play. It also it also enables Miles if we top deck him. So what we have to do is we have to, um, they snap. I'm in a neighborhood Spider-Man. Well, that was useless. But we did move, and it doesn't matter because we don't draw miles. Okay, never mind. Spoke too soon. We can potentially push for Mojo World here. And then figure out how to treat the other one. They're a combo deck, so them, them having less cards... Limits their plays. Mojo and Spider-Man there. That's like that's a lot. Like they're not really playing into Mojo World, and I don't think they can play into Mojo World at this point. I also really like the idea of just um Spider Women. Spider Women on the right. Oh. Just don't spawn in the middle. Don't spawn in the middle. Don't spawn in the middle, please. Enough. You got what? Two cards in hand? You're not winning Mojo World. Death and Null. You see, like, those are very specific cards. What if they have a Null and another card? I'm going for it. Yeah, they're not they're not playing that. Nice Eliath, bro. Get out of here. Telling ya, telling ya, Adelan really hurts this deck. <laughs> 